Did you know every time you celebrate Thanksgiving, you are giving your energy to a dark ritual rooted in genocide, conflict, and blood? People that are knowledgeable about indigenous spiritual practices are well aware that offerings are often given to ancestors and other deities as a form of gratitude or to ask for their assistance. When these offerings are given, the ceremony is called a ritual. When you purchase a turkey and other groceries to prepare for this tradition, you are participating in a ritual. When your family gathers at the table to take part in these traditions, you are participating in a ritual. Although you may have a clear vision of all the things you are thankful for, and you may even have your own reason for celebrating, what really matters is the original intention that was set for this holiday. Who are you really giving thanks to and what? are you really giving thanks for? In order to answer these questions, we need to go back to the 1600s when the pilgrims of Plymouth United Kingdom landed on the shores of Cape Cod, which is modern day Provincetown, Massachusetts. It is said that they set sail seeking economic and religious freedom in the new world. The first time that they arrived, they left with hundreds of enslaved natives and they left behind smallpox. The native inhabitants of that area consisted of various tribes, including the Wampanoag people and the Pequot people. They were there for over 10,000 years before the Europeans arrived. The pilgrims began to build their settlements, but they were not doing so well. They lived in dirt-covered shelters with a shortage of food, and many of them died due to illness and harsh weather. The natives that were there, specifically a man named Squando of the Wampanoag tribe, helped them and he taught them how to plant crops including corn as well as where to fish and hunt. As a child, we're taught that the pilgrims created this feast called Thanksgiving to show their gratitude to the natives for teaching them how to live off the land. But this, like many other things taught in school, is only partially true. They don't tell you about the Puritans who are also from England that came after hearing of the success of the New World and started warring with the Pequot tribe over their land. They were enslaving and killing the native people left and right. Massacres were taking place every day, just like Columbus did to the Arawaks and just like Leopold did to the Congolese and many more. It's the same story in a different location. Every time they successfully destroyed the people of these tribes, they would have a feast and give thanks. They were celebrating the victory of murdering your ancestors and every time you sit down to celebrate Thanksgiving, whether you realize it or not, you are doing the same. Anyway, Squanto tried to get the Pequot and the Puritans to sign a peace treaty, but the Pequot declined. They fought to keep their land and their dignity. The Pequot War was one of the bloodiest Native American wars ever fought. In 1637, near present-day Groton, Connecticut, the Pequot people gathered for their yearly green corn festival which was their version of thanksgiving in the late night hours the english and dutch forced the sleeping natives out of their homes and proceeded to beat murder and enslave their men as their women and children stood by and watched in horror the next day the governor of the massachusetts bay colony declared a day of thanksgiving because over 700 unarmed men women and children had been murdered motivated by their victory the colonists and their native allies attacked village after village. Women and children over 14 were sold into slavery while the rest were murdered. Boats loaded with as many as 500 enslaved individuals regularly left the ports of what the Europeans called New England. Following another successful raid against the Pequot in what is now called Stamford, Connecticut, the church announced a second day of Thanksgiving to celebrate their victory. They hacked off the heads of the natives and their heads were kicked all over town like soccer balls. The chief of the Wampanoag tribe was beheaded and his head was put on display in Plymouth, Massachusetts for 24 years. These Thanksgiving feasts continued after every massacre until George Washington finally suggested that only one day of Thanksgiving per year be set aside. Later on, during the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln declared Thanksgiving a national holiday. Every year when you celebrate this holiday, this is what you're giving your energy to. Many of you you will say that you're only celebrating for the food or to spend time with family and friends, not realizing that as long as you are putting energy into this holiday, you are taking part in their ritual. I challenge you to create your own day of gratitude, one that isn't rooted in murder. Set aside a day to have a big meal with your family and friends and make it your own family tradition. Let me know in the comments when you stop celebrating Thanksgiving. And if you haven't, when do you plan to stop participating in this tradition of making a mockery of your people? As 
long as we continue to participate in their rituals, they will remain at the top and we will stay right here at the bottom.